I'll show you how I migrate a project from Avid Media Composer to Adobe Premiere Pro. The best tip I can give you is this. Clean up and organize the project before migrating to Premiere. I'll take you on a tour of my Avid project, so you can see how I've cleaned and organized the sequences and bins I want to move. I have seven bins, and I've named and numbered each bin. I've removed unused clips and checked metadata columns to ensure that critical information I want transferred has been entered. I have comments and LUT information on some clips. In the timeline, I have a rough cut sequence that is not simply cuts only. I've got a few transitions, some color correction filters, and titles with an alpha layer. I've also reframed a shot and reversed playback on B-roll. I even put in a multi-clip, but spoiler alert, Avid and Premiere don't use the same multicam processing. The effects won't all translate into Premiere Pro, so it's important to output a reference movie for this sequence. Before I export the AAF, I want to mention I cleaned up the sequence. I've moved graphics and alpha clips to their own track, B-roll gets its own track, A-roll does too, and I've also cleaned up the audio clips. Now I'm ready to export my advanced authoring format file, or AAF. I'll go up to the Cut Sequences bin, select my rough cut sequence, right-click it, and choose to output a file. I like to save these to an AAF export folder. While you do have the option to save presets, you can always start with an untitled setting and click Options. I usually put a check by all these boxes, and in this case I want to export all video and all audio tracks. When both Avid and Adobe Premiere Pro have access to the media files, Link2 is my go-to export method. If you have enough space on your drives, you can copy and consolidate all media, but it isn't necessary if everything's on the same system. I don't typically choose to mix down video effects because they'll become baked into each clip and I won't have the ability to make changes to them later in Premiere Pro. I'll press Save and Export the AAF. The exported sequence appears in my bin. Now I'm ready to export my bins. I'll select my interview clips and make sure I've added comments and any needed information in custom metadata columns. Go to the File menu, Output, Export Bin. Make sure you don't have an individual clip selected or you won't see the option to export a bin. I'll deselect the clips and export an Avid Log Exchange file. I'll save to my ALE Exports folder and choose Avid Log Exchange for the export setting. Now I'll move to each additional bin, right click in the empty gray area, choose Export Bin, and export an ALE file for each bin. Finally, I'll export an edit decision list. I'll select the sequence and use the List tool to generate an EDL. Put a check mark next to the options you want in the list for picture and sound. You can preview and make changes before you save the file. It's not necessary to export an EDL, but I want you to be aware that, like ALE and AAF files, an EDL can be used to migrate metadata and projects. I'll print this file and use it to reference the timecode of every cut and effect in my sequence. Now it's time to import the goods into Adobe Premiere Pro. In Premiere's project panel, I'll right-click, choose Import, navigate to my AAF Exports folder, and select the file I exported from Avid. You'll see a translation report. Just click OK. A bin appears in the project. It contains the sequence and associated clips. First, I rename this bin. Then, I open the bin and pull out the sequence. I'll select it, press Command-X, I'll create a new bin, name it 01 Sequences, and paste the migrated sequence. Now I'll import the ALE files to bring in the bins. I'll right-click, choose Import, and navigate to the ALE Exports folder. I shift-click to select bins 2 through 7, then click Import. With the bins imported, this project is starting to look familiar. The master clips are offline, so I'll have to relink but the metadata transferred beautifully. LUT information baked into master clips will appear in the LUT column. If you don't see the information you were expecting, right-click on a column name, select Metadata Display, and activate needed columns. Now I'll bring these clips back online. I'll select everything in the bin, right-click, and choose Link Media. 
I leave tape name deselected. I also check Use Media Browser to locate files. And on the left, you can see my media folder has been saved as a favorite. Because this is a location I visit often, Premiere's media browser immediately found the first clip. It also helps that I have display exact name matches selected. All media in this bin lives in one location on my drive, so I'll click OK and the entire bin will come back online. Returning to the project panel, I'll select bins 3 through 7 and relink the files for the remaining master clips. So that's my workflow. Let's go examine the sequence and clips. In the timeline, effects like dissolves migrated perfectly. The wipe was replaced with the dissolve, and markers were automatically added to warn me about color filters that didn't translate. LUT information baked onto master clips translates, but if I applied a LUT effect to a clip in Avid's timeline, I'll have to reapply it here in Premiere. My matte key effects have lost their alpha channel. That's an easy fix. For now, I'll just turn off this track. The pan and scan I added in Avid didn't make it across, and you can see the letterboxing as a result. In the multi-clip, I no longer have access to both camera angles, but all angles are available in my bin. Reverse playback and speed changes on this shot did translate, and the reference movie will help me recreate the effects that didn't migrate. Down in the audio tracks, level keyframes came across, but when I scroll down, I see one of the stereo channels missing from the music track. I also see the stereo sound effect has been split into dual mono. Revealing that clip in the project takes me to the recovered clips bin. Premiere gathered the altered files when I imported the sequence AAF. I see both left and right channels for the music file and for the sound effect. There's also a sequence where left and right channels have been nested. In the sound effects bin, that was imported from an ALE, the same clip appears in its original stereo form, which brings me to the important difference between exporting a bin from Avid as an AAF or an ALE. When I match frame on a clip in the sequence and then reveal that clip in the project, it opens the bin of clips imported from the sequence AAF. When I reveal that clip at the drive level, it links to the Avid MXF file. I'll go find that master clip in the B-roll bin I brought in from ALE. You can see that the master clip in the bin relinks to my original 5K files. This is a critical difference between AAF and ALE export. Had I selected all the clips in my Avid B-roll bin and exported them as AAF files, they would link to the Avid MXF files instead of to my 5K source media. This is good to know because I plan to continue the edit in Adobe Premiere Pro.